Hey YouTube, in this video, we're gonna answer once and for all, what is the native VLAN? This is the topology we'll be using to illustrate the concept of the native VLAN. We have six computers spread across three different VLANs configured on two switches. Before we can fully explain the native VLAN, it is imperative that you already understand the concepts of an access port and a trunk port. In the non-Cisco world, these are often called untagged ports and tagged ports. Either way, if you need to review these definitions, please look at this article. There's a link in the description. The switch's configuration can be viewed below. Both switches have VLANs 11, 22, and 33 created. Both switches have three access ports, one in each VLAN facing the attached computers. Both switches have Ethernet 3.3 configured as a trunk port to carry traffic between the switches. The access ports can be verified by using the command show VLAN brief. As you can see, each switch has an active port in VLANs 11, 22, and 33. And the trunk port can be verified with the command show int trunk. Interface Ethernet 3.3 is indeed a trunk port, and it currently has the default native VLAN of 1. To prove the topology is working as intended, we will send some pings between PC2 and PC5 in VLAN 22. Those pings were successful. And we will also send some pings between PC3 and PC6 in VLAN 33. Those pings were also successful. But let's take a look at what is happening behind the scenes. We're going to start a packet capture on the trunk between the switches to see the packets flowing through it. For our purpose, we will limit the packet captures to just ICMP packets to see our pings. Then we'll shoot over a couple more pings. This time, we'll limit the pings sent from each computer to just one. You'll notice that as expected, both pings succeeded and they are captured in Wireshark. Each successful ping is made up of two ICMP packets, an ICMP echo request from the initiator and an ICMP echo reply from the responder. The ping between PC3 and PC6 is the same. This is PC3's ICMP echo request, and this is PC6's ICMP echo reply. The part we're interested in is below. This pane is showing you the packet headers. This is the layer 1 header, then the layer 2 header, then the VLAN tag, then the layer 3 header, and finally, the ICMP payload itself. If we expand the VLAN tag, we can see it's comprised of a few different fields. The one we're interested in is the VLAN ID. To make it easier to track, we're going to apply this field as a column in Wireshark. Now we can easily see that the ping between PC2 and PC5 was tagged with VLAN 22 when it traversed the trunk, and the ping between PC3 and PC6 was tagged with VLAN 33. Okay, so quick summary of what we've discovered. Anytime traffic is traversing a trunk port, a VLAN tag is added. The purpose of this tag is to tell the receiving switch what VLAN the frames belong to. If you understand this, then we can proceed to explaining the function of the native VLAN. What we are going to do is change the native VLAN for this trunk port on switch 1 and switch 2. We'll go into interface configuration mode and use the command switch port trunk native VLAN 33. We'll do the same thing on switch 2. And we'll verify the native VLAN configuration using the command show int trunk. Just like before, we'll shoot over a ping from PC2 to PC5 on VLAN 22. And as expected, the ping was successful. If we look at Wireshark, we can see that the echo request and the echo reply were both tagged with VLAN 22. This is identical to before. Nothing has changed for VLAN 22. Now we'll send a ping across on VLAN 33 from PC3 to PC6. Like before, the ping was successful, but something different occurred on the wire. Notice the echo reply and the echo request do not have a VLAN tag. In fact, if we look at the packet headers, we can only see the headers for layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, and the ICMP payload. Notice there is no VLAN tag. The packet still made it through, however. The path between PC3 and PC6 is exactly the same as it was before. The native VLAN configuration only affected things by removing the VLAN tag for frames in VLAN 33. Nothing else has changed. So, to summarize what we learned, trunk ports add a VLAN tag to distinguish which frames belong to which VLANs. The native VLAN is simply the one VLAN on a trunk port which traverses without a VLAN tag. Keep in mind, the native VLAN configuration is done per trunk port per switch. The sending switch will tag all frames it sent across the trunk except whichever frames belong to what is locally configured as the native VLAN. 
the receiving switch will accept all tag traffic onto the VLAN indicated by the tag, and all untagged traffic onto the VLAN that is locally configured as the native VLAN. That being said, it is crucially important for both sides of the trunk to be configured with the same native VLAN. To learn what can happen when you have a native VLAN mismatch, go and check out this article. If you're trying to learn how to subnet, check out this playlist which will teach you to become a subnetting pro. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider sharing it with your friends. It's time for the rest of the world to understand what the native VLAN is. Also consider clicking the like button and subscribing to this channel. Until next time, have a great day.